Welcome to the next in a series of devlog videos looking at the development for the ultimate virtual reality turret shooter. I'm Watt Imagination and I make immersive experiences. Before we get into the content, if you haven't seen the introduction to this devlog series, I will stick a link at the end of the video to make it easy to get to. But to sum up the project in short, I love making immersive experiences and I've always wanted to make both a mech and turret based virtual reality game incorporating a full motion simulator. So I started building them. In this video I'll be delving into the weapons testing area. It's something I create and build for all of my shooter experiences, so I can isolate what is the biggest interaction the player will make throughout the game. I'll also break down the various components that I incorporate to make the interaction the best I possibly can for the player. What you're about to see is a work in progress, and nothing is final, but I wanted to get the introduction out, so over the rest of these devlogs you can see how things progress. Let's start with the first interaction by the player with the weapon itself. I wanted to make the turret railgun interaction as close to the physical motion simulator articulated arms as possible. To do that, I created a simulated arm system utilizing a set of hinges at the exact same place with the same joint motion as the real thing. So as you can see from the videos, as I move the joystick in virtual space, the joints all move in coordination and are limited as the real world simulator is. They are even counterbalanced like the real thing, so that when the player lets go of the joystick, they return to rest at their starting position. As the player moves the joystick, the turret then moves in turn to match it. However, it lags slightly behind the player's movement. This gives the feel of moving a large piece of machinery and enhances the sense of immersion and power behind the player's actions. Now onto the fun part. As we pull the trigger on our controller, the turret fires a projectile off into the world. Here I produce an effect that will always be visible in the player's peripheral vision. This effect speeds up slightly as the player holds down the trigger. Point of note here is that the railgun's audio has a start, loop and end sound that works for a single fire as well as multiple rounds. To enhance the effect of firing, the barrel of the railgun recalls in an animation backwards and the player feels a haptic pulse through the controller. Another important note here is that if the player holds the trigger for continuous firing, the haptic pulse does not continue for two reasons. The first is that the battery of the controllers will drain having to constantly perform the haptics, and secondly, the player will get used to it and the haptic effect will lose its bearing after a prolonged period of firing. Instead, we pulse the haptics at intervals during the continuous firing. Notice how the screen shakes slightly when the railgun is fired. It's harder to see in the test area as you're not surrounded by the turret's cockpit, but you should just be able to make it out in this video. We make sure to keep the screen shake minimal so as not to cause motion sickness for the player and have extensively tested this against different levels over different players in order to hone it just right. Let's talk about the elongated reticle, shaped that way as a homage to the end of the railgun's barrel. It portrays several pieces of information to the player. Firstly, the most basic information is the obvious one. This is where the gun is pointing and if you shoot, this is where the projectile will head. Secondly, if the reticle is over an enemy, it will portray an outer display as a helper to the player. When firing, the reticle will scale slightly in size, indicating that prolonged fire will not be as accurate as short bursts, and when the player hits an enemy, a hit marker will be displayed. At the distances the turret game is played over, it's important not to make the reticle parts too thick so they become obtrusive, but at the same time, they need to be clearly visible to the player. At this point, it's worth mentioning that the sounds you are hearing from the firing, explosions, impacts, etc. are tweaked for this weapons area. When the player is in the turret, they take on more reverb. Also note that there is a fine line on arcade type space shooters between accuracy, i.e. not hearing anything in the vacuum of space, and making things dramatic by playing a little loose with what the player hears. Let's move on to the enemies. In this weapons area, we are looking to test the weapon system rather than the AI so we only incorporate a simple target beacon. It won't fight back like the enemies in the game, but it will get destroyed. Enemies in this game come with damageable parts. Some parts are vital to the enemy's continuation, and if hit, will cause an immediate disintegration. Think of this like getting a vital strike against a cockpit, engine, or strapped audience like a tactical nuke. Other areas are not so vital, like shielding, communications arrays, etc. 
Hitting these will damage the enemy, but not destroy it outright. In this game, however, we add in a lottery system. Hitting a non-vital part might make the enemy spin out of control and hit an asteroid, or bonus, maybe another enemy. Another system we have is a debris system. When an enemy explodes within a proximity to the player, the resultant debris from the enemy may hit the player's cockpit, as you see in this video. It's good to give the player a little shock of cracked glass and an impact sound just to keep them engaged. You'll notice our enemies are staggered. We use a custom behavior on Unity's timeline system in order to dictate which enemy or enemy squad is spawned when and where. This makes the rounds incredibly easy to change up and test. Each enemy then follows a set route, with their AI dictating what state they should be in, depending on the state of their squad, them taking damage, etc. In a later video, when we start showing more exciting enemies that fight back, I will go over the various elements like the node-based AI state control system and how we spawn and control our enemy waves. So be sure to hit the subscribe button so you know when that video drops. For now though, that's all we'll go over for this weapons testing area. If anything stands out that you'd be interested in learning more about, let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.